since you've been listening this far, we're gonna throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour gonna last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Oh, man, that was a perfect springtime song, wasn't it? Me and how you doing, Steve? We're dancing in the studio. Uh, chanson papillon. Uh, Chaka Khan. Welcome to the bonus hour, everybody. There seems to be a little snafu here with my fax machine, which is getting me quite upset because I keep... You all keep using the paper. I'm not complaining about that. But when I load it with paper... See, what is wrong with the fax machine? Okay, wait, hold on. Then it stops. See, nothing happens. All right, well, look. I'm fixing it. Yeah, there's, there's so many. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, it's fixed. Good. All right. Now that I'm going to get a bunch of faxes from like the last half hour of the show, I haven't been getting faxes. Not getting faxes is like the worst to me. You know, it's, it's like immediate communication with the show. I sit right next to the fax machine. I load it with paper. I look at it myself. I fix it myself. I got a whole set of screwdrivers and stuff. An electric screwdriver that TJ Qua gave me for Mother's Day last year. I know you might be insulted by something like that, but I was looking for one. And also a cork gun. Which, who gave me a cork gun? A cork, a cork gun. Who gave that to me? Jason, right? Jason, the, um, the intern? Yeah, cork gun. I love that. I changed caulking in my house. You know, where like sometimes you've got very pretty tiles, but then the caulking is plain white and you might want the caulking to be black. So I go to the Home Depot, I get my, you know, and get the caulk gun out and all like that. I love doing that stuff. Oh, here come the faxes. Look at me. I fixed it. So look, apparently this wasn't this child's first time acting out. Now, what is today's date? Today is April 25th. We just found out about the arrest of this little girl last week, Right. Well, I have an article uh, that was published on March 18th of 2005 about this same little girl. The pupils were counting jelly beans as a part of a math exercise when one of them started acting silly. Mrs. Otter's back. This is the same teacher from the same classroom at the same school in St. Petersburg, Florida, everybody. Mrs. Otter's back decided to take away her jelly beans. This is the child that was acting silly. The five-year-old didn't like that. She terrorized room 13 at Fairmont Elementary School, trashing Mrs. O's desk, smashing a candy dish, and kicking another teacher in the shins. At the principal's office, it got worse. The girl threw books and boxes, climbed atop desks, and started jump uh, stomping. She drew on the walls, hit the assistant principal in the stomach. Minutes later, the girl was in the back of a police cruiser. Oh, okay, so this is the story that we read about. These are the events that led up to. <laughs> I don't want to talk um, ahead of myself. This could not be my child. Do you realize that this kind of anger is from someplace other than the teacher taking away some jelly beans? And this child apparently hasn't been taught rule number one. Which is, I will come to that school and pull your pants down and wear your behind out in front of the whole class. <laughs> Oh, you got to be kidding me. Minutes later in the back of a police cru cruiser, under arrest for battery. Her hand, Well, that's ridiculous. Her hands were bound with plastic ties, her ankles and handcuffs. Eh, ridiculous. I don't want to go to jail, she said moments after her arrest. Now, this is the five-year-old doing all the talking. I don't want to go to jail. But they know about jail, the kids do. My child plays around with that, and I don't even like to hear it coming. You know, a little black boy, you know, going to grow up to be a black man. There's a couple things I don't like to hear from him. First of all, no guns. Second of all, I don't want you to talk about you fell out on the ground and then he says, I'm dead. Uh-uh. I don't like to hear that. You know, sometimes I sleep and, and I hear him, you know, and I'm like heart slow to wake up. He says, Mommy, are you dead? What? An overreaction by frazzled adults. Or an inappropriate response in a time when a young students when young students are becoming more violent. We never want to have a five year old uh, five year old children arrested," said uh, the superintendent of schools. That's all he said. I mean, the article goes on and on and on and on. Um, hey, Gwen, I just. Um, 
I mean, this is a really disgusting article, but there's there has there has to be a bigger picture dealing with this child. Maybe this child is not starting the day with the right breakfast, and we all know that that's so crucial for the kids, or at least we've learned it. All right, well maybe it's not. Maybe a kid can eat jelly beans and a glass of grape soda, or or nothing before going to school. But you know how you are, how aggravated you get. Once you start getting hungry, and, you know, we're able to eat when we want as adults, but the kids, they got to wait until lunchtime no matter what. Here are a couple of faxes from some of you guys, then we're going to go to the phones to talk about other things. In response to the child that was handcuffed and put in the back of the police car, first and foremost, if this was my child, it wouldn't be happening. My son is three, and he already understands that I don't tolerate acting out at home, and I'm damn sure not going to tolerate it in public. My child wouldn't act up like, you know what, I'm scared to say if this was my, if this was my child, because you just never know about the kids. But... I feel certain enough to co-sign with this mother. But it's, but I feel certain enough to co-sign with this, uh, with this mother. Yeah. Oh. The incident was unfortunate, but when are people going to wake up and realize that teachers are underpaid and they are there to educate children, not to raise them? Discipline should start at home, and it sounds like nothing was going on. Wait, exactly. I'm waiting to do it because they're doing a two-week investigation internally. And I can't wait to find out what the schematics of home life is for this five-year-old child. Because something tells me this is one of these, those children who's seen too much, hears too much, and knows too much too fast. And is not starting off the day with the proper breakfast, having the proper nutrients for lunchtime. Or perhaps dinner time. Probably doesn't know what a vegetable is. Then again, I could be wrong about everything. But I'm just, you know, you know, mom never reads to the child at home. And, you know, truth be told, if you really want to be honest as a parent, then you'll admit you don't always read to your kid at bedtime either. I know I don't. I would love to do it more. And sometimes I damn sure walk right past the room like I'm just too tired. I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'll come, I don't do it either. But I make up. You know, you make up with hugs and loves and, you know, a story at, you know, maybe it's not bed- bedtime. Maybe it's the middle of the day. You know, you know what you do. You- Look, it's a tough job. I don't have to explain to you. Uh, Mom should also look at herself and recognize that because of her not disciplining the child home, she went to school and raised hell. Remember, people, spare the rod, spoil the child. Hmm. You don't have to tell me twice, CB. Dear Wendy, there's probably other underlying problems with this child. Does anybody know if the child has emotional problems which could have been ignored? Parents. Parents are often in denial of their children's behavior. Parents sometimes don't develop a good relationship with the teachers, which sometimes is grave to circumstances with the child. Teachers, on the other hand, can alienate a child to make them feel inferior and unloved. Uh Uh-uh, not if you've got a parent coming in there putting the smack down on the teacher. And I don't mean a smack, smack, malicious down. But, you know, you start prodding the teacher from the beginning. To me, there's... Nobody has to get nasty. At least I haven't had that um, that situation. My kid's been going to school since he was three months. He started out at the Goddard School. You might not call it a school, but it was titled school, and we paid school tuition. So um, as far as I was concerned, it's a school. He doesn't go there anymore, but I'm just saying. And from the beginning, there was a certain amount of in the classroom and, and you know, calling and a good relationship, not just with the teachers, but with other teachers in the school, the classrooms that I pass and finger wave to. The principal, the assistants, the whole bit. You just have to, you have to, it's about relationships. Wendy, not for nothing, it was obvious that this child is a problem. We as black folks have problems uh, when it comes to decisions that result in our children seeking counseling. As a parent, I find it disturbing that this child acted out so on and so forth, to aid and the principals. This, of course, is not the first time that this child behaved like that. Exactly. And for this parent to act as if suing would rectify the situation, please. Exactly. The parent needs to be sued, not the school. And if I would have seen my child act a fool like that, I would have whooped her ass. No one touches her in any way to constitute suing. Exactly. But, you know, you you already make that perfectly clear to me do you even have to say those actual words you show by your concern that there's certain things that you're going to put up with and won't put up with and you want an immediate phone call now truth be told i heard from this story that the mother was not able to make it to the school in under an hour so um oh my gosh but you still Okay, say there was no mother no grandmother to make it to school in under an hour say there was no baby's father no uncle nobody isn't there a particular, there has to be a better way of smoothing out this situation. I mean, the handcuffs and all that, but then again, all those broken dishes, all those people being punched in the stomach. 
It's crazy. It's a crazy world. I know not of what I speak yet, but you know, I'm you know, as I get my feet into it, look. Um, Wendy, I'm a sexy 32 year old midget. Oh wait, this is something totally different. Okay, we'll get to this after the phone calls. Hello. Hi, hi, Wendy. Hi. Hey, mommy. Uh, did you see over the weekend? Did you have time to relax, um, Taylor Dane? No, I didn't. On VH1. De- how is it? Okay, Taylor Dane's in that um, remake. Remaking. Of. Yeah. Yeah. How's she looking? What's she oh, doing? Oh, yeah, she looks good. She looks good. They only did Botox on her. No. That's it. What? Well, does it look like? I mean, between me and you, like she needs more? No. Her body's looking right. Her body's looking right. Yeah, well, she worked with a personal trainer, though. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, every, you know. Speaking of that that dance music and Latin freestyle, mm-hmm. I can't help but think of you every time I hear Noel's "Silent Morning." <laughs> White lady. Yes, that, that was my song. <laughs> Six minutes and eleven seconds. It used to give me a nice break in the bathroom back in the day when I was offending. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? And Amy Marie stuck in traffic? Yeah, you know what? She's stuck in traffic. We're going to hold off on her. She's going to pop by at some point tomorrow. You know, she's a friend of the show. Right. I don't normally accept things like that for most of our guests, but she's uh, special to me. Hey, and speaking of Asian Africans like Amy Marie, uh-huh. is John Legend uh, half Asian? You know, he does have squinty eyes, but he's all black. Because you know Sonia Sohn, who you had on from The Wire? Yes. He's from the, he's from the same tribe as her. Kind sort of and she has asian in her right she's half korean like uh amory yeah 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 no john uh does have the the, the squinty eyes but no he's a black man oh, okay yeah and uh who does steve look like that's famous steve the intern he reminds me of jack from will and grace now he doesn't exactly look like jack but in terms of how he dresses and is his very very innocent uh, approachable hairstyle. It's like Jack, and the look on his face. He's clean shaven. He has clean, clear skin, and really youthful looking. It sounds boyish. And his body, and his body type is very much like Jack. Like if he puts on an Izod shirt and a pair of Levi's, he looks like he's in high school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, and speaking of uh, interns, my favorite intern is Mr. X was blowing up somebody, uh-huh. uh, is Kaisha, but is, she's no longer there, right? I saw Kaisha over the weekend. You know what? She's no longer here, but Kaisha, I could tell you, is willing and dealing as a businesswoman. She's it, it, on the path to try to make big things happen for you her. You rubbed off on her. Yeah, and I still keep in contact with her. She was over the house on the weekend. And what about Lauren uh, Lee, Liv, Tay, Liv Tyler lookalike? Um, you know what? When her intern was done, internship was done, she left. Or have you heard from, from Lauren Liv Tyler? Oh, you know what? She moved to California, Art just said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot, and look forward uh, to Marty on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. It's Tamika from Jersey. How are you? Hi, Tamika. How's it going? Good. Nice to have you here. Nice to be on. I was calling because I went to the Alicia Keys concert on Saturday. Did mm-hmm. you talk about that already? Uh, no, but um, I did get a piece of correspondence from people saying it was terrific. It was great, and she can dance. She was okay. She wasn't bad. I thought she was going to be bad, but she was good. Good. And John Legend was wonderful. Excellent. And there was a fight that broke out, though, during the concert. Oh, what? I know. I don't know. You're going to the Lisa Keys concert, not a ludicrous concert, but, like, people started fighting. I couldn't see, but, like, the security people came over and took care of it. Mm. But Derek Jeter was sitting behind me. Mm. And um, what else? And Emmett Smith and his wife were there. Interesting. Well, thank you and so much. Thanks, Wendy, for having me on. And I just want to let you know that my uncle, Joseph Yaden, was on your station a while ago. Oh, wow. I yeah. know him. He's uh, an accountant. Yes, that's my uncle. Yes, I in Irvington, New Jersey. Yep. Well, tell him Great. I said hello. And you take care also, young lady. Thank you, Wendy. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. How are you? All right. I think. You think? <laughs> Your voice. Oh. <laughs> I need to ask a question for you. Okay. I'm interested in knowing your attorney information. I'm dealing with the entertainment business, um, and I have some contracts. I'm going overseas. Okay. And um, I want to use the representation here in the city of Newark. I am in the city of Newark, and I've been hearing you talk about your representation. I can go all, all on all day about the wonderful things that Ray Hamlin has done for me and my family. Take down their web address. They've got a full-blown website. You what ready? Is, yeah, what is it? Okay, it's Hunt H- 
Hamlin and Ridley. Damn, how you spell that? Well, I'm not sure, but look, <laughs> why don't you just stop by the office? 60 Park Place, right next to the Robert Treat Hotel. Y'all got you, got you, got you. You got it? Got you, baby. They're open five days a week, so even if you go by there and make an appointment or whatever, okay, or call direct me assistance. Uh, what is it again, baby? Again? Hunt, Hamlin, and Ridley, 60, one, uh, 60, 60 Park Place. Thank you so much, love. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Um, oops. One more. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm fine. I was just calling. Hey, Marie's still supposed to be coming today? No, she got uh, stuck in traffic, but she's going to do a pop-by tomorrow. But she felt so bad. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So the Source Magazine bid is up to $16,000. Artie, I think between me, you, and maybe uh, Mr. Sutton, we can pull together $16,000. You want to have a magazine? Let's do it. Can we make it like, oh, where I'm on the cover every month? You can do it like that. <laughs> but we'll still keep it gangster. I'll be on, you know, anyway. You with a rapper every month. Yeah, yeah, me and a rapper, exactly. That's how it would have to be. I find it hard to believe that this, this uh, publication is being sold on eBay. A, and I find it even more incredible to believe that it's $16,000 the bidding is up to. I just find it all to be a lie. One great big lie. I believe the source is for sale, but I believe somebody is already swooped down, purchased it, and then this is just like a jokey joke. To keep the name of the source alive until it can be rejudged. Suede Magazine is coming back. And I know because I was supposed to be, I'm supposed to be in the, the new edition's first edition. There, but the woman who interviewed me's grandma died in Jamaica. And so she had to go there. And she's settling family business. When she comes back, I get interviewed. That's why I'm going to ask her more about it. Okay, so when's this issue going to be out in Suede Magazine? Leon has breaking news from Philly. Art, you might be interested in this. Okay. Will Smith. And his former beatbox, Ready Rock C, are going to kiss and make up at a hip-hop summit in Philly this weekend. Put on by my radio station, Power 99 in Philly. And after that, Will will announce that the group will then go on and uh, re, uh, excuse me, go on a uh, reunion tour of uh, old favorites. He has also apologized to Ready Rock C for using Biz Marquee in Men in Black 2. Now, what does this mean to the rest of us? Because I'm hearing crickets in my head. No, if you're from Philly, Ray Rock C was very instrumental in the very old days. Oh, then maybe I need to save this until tomorrow. Like the bonus hour, everybody's in Philly. Nobody, yeah, I mean, in New York, that. nobody cares. Save that. Yeah. Shout out to the smattering of people listening online, uh, you know, from Philly. This is good news for you. I'm still hearing crickets in my head. No, that's just big news. He's better than Bismarcky. Uh-uh, no, you don't. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. going to fall back. Dear Wendy, I'm a sexy 32-year-old midget, and I have four kids. <laughs> and one baby's daddy. Oh. Art pulls his mic around. He's all ready. <laughs> ready for this one. <laughs> Although we've been together for 10 years, I've just recently encountered a teenage, well-endowed jump-off who is just, <laughs> you know, even the midgets are jumping off. Oh, I hear that. Who has just turned me out. My man has no idea that I've been jumping off with his nephew. That's, oh, 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 sorry. That's the well-endowed teenager. Who often stays overnight and is also a playmate of my children. Which I find very convenient. Oh, hold on now. Well-endowed. Wait, hold on. You're 32, you've got four kids and one baby's daddy. Now, you don't say how old your kids are. But what is your teenage nephew doing playing with the kids unless one of the kids is, you know, like 15 or whatever? Right. And in which case, you don't say playing with. You say, uh... Hang out. Hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds better. My man has been very supportive financially, but he does not get as freaky as his nephew. There isn't a day that goes by without me thinking about hot, nasty sex with me and the nephew. What makes the sex especially hot is that he's willing to go mm, give me a professional and my man would never think of it. And the nephew is six feet four while I'm vertically challenged. My question to you is, 
Do I stay in my boring relationship or do you think it would be wrong to dump my man for the nephew alias the magic stick? <laughs> this has been a hard decision, no pun intended. It's from P in Piscataway. P, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Do you hear what you described to me, 32-year-old midget woman with four kids? You said, I've recently had an encounter with a teenaged, well-endowed jumper. The boy is a teenager. He don't want you. It's the excitement of that midget love. <laughs> I mean, at six feet four, imagine all types of... You could take her, bounce her like this, throw her up in the air, go get some apple juice up while she's up in the air, come back, and she lands back. Ooh. And just... You know what I'm saying? There are things that you can... Ooh. Midget, I understand. There are things, though, that can be done with you that perhaps can't be done with a regular woman unless she's about 90 pounds. A. And B, what is a teenager going to do with you saddled with four kids? And what kind of child support do you think you're going to have a hard time getting from your man of 10 years who's the father of all four of your kids? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? Mm. But I can see where you would need a jump off because you've been with him since you were 22 and now you're 32. And four kids. It's not like they've been together 10 years, but they have no kids and they, you know, she's been saddled. All the kids probably bigger than her too. Mm -hmm. What you say, little mama? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, um, Paige, fall back off the teenage love. He doesn't want you like that. He will not take care of you like that. What are you doing? What are you doing, Paige? I mean, woman from Piscataway. <laughs> Beyonce Knowles' father, Matthew Knowles. No, keep that going because that's the music that plays when Matthew walks in the room. Okay. Is planning to unveil an album of unreleased music from the late great Rick James through his Sanctuary Music Group. I can't wait to hear it. August 2nd, the record will include a duet with his superstar daughter. Oh, you see what Matthew's trying to do. Weasel, weasel, weasel the daughter in and then give her Ty James. Matthew, are you listening? I would love to have an interview with Ty James, if you don't mind. Thank you. So guess what? Lindsay Lohan knows this little black boy who's been hired for Desperate Housewives. And I never pegged her for being friends with blacks. You know what I mean? Like, Lindsay, they, you know, there's certain people who you just don't... We talk about this on the show. Lindsay Lohan's one of those people... I just don't, and I know she was friends with Raven, but I'm talking about now that she's mega famous. Like, does she really, oh hell, she, she is friends with black people. But just in my mind, I just, okay. Well, in the meantime, here's what's going on. A hyperactive Lindsay Lohan, this, is, this all happened um, while manically playing Pac-Man at a downtown place called welcome to the johnson's bar have you ever heard of that steve you live downtown Art, right, have you ever heard of welcome to the johnson's it's a no. it's a bar downtown where you can play pac-man oh no no okay well this is how the scene is described a hyperactive lindsey lohan you know what that is <laughs> all right described how stroked excuse me how stoked oh where is my mind oh how stoked she was that her friend McKee, McKed Brooks got cast for Desperate Housewives. And here's what Lindsay says. Oh, my God. I was so happy when, when Mech called and told me the good news. It's an awesome show. And so many freaking people are, are going, going to be seeing him every week. I'm so sto stoked for Mech because he's got so much talent and just needed his big break. How did she meet Mr. Brooks, you ask? Here's her quote. My girlfriend, Tamika... Look at Lindsay, Ooh. knowing a Tamika, living with a raven, and cheering for a maquette. <laughs> I stand corrected. She's virtually black. Yes. My girlfriend Tamika <laughs> was at USC with Maked when he was going there, and she introduced us. That was like three years ago. We do the math in our heads, and Lindsay... Uh, and tell Lindsay that she was 15 when she met McKeg, McKed, and she shrugs and says whatever and continues to play Pac-Man. I believe she was 15. Look at her parents. 
she was definitely 15 hanging around with 21 year olds probably you know you know the, i see they're trying to catch her with her age i believe she's the age she says i believe her parents you know have allowed for a little bit more loosey goosiness than Oh, Wendy, didn't you know about Us Magazine? I've sent you hate faxes directed at them more than once. I've looked at the magazine and never found Us, only them. At least Ebony has the decency to call themselves Ebony. What are you saying with Us Magazine? They don't even send me a complimentary copy. I actually purchase it. Shout out to In Touch and, and, and Life and Style. Thank you for my complimentary copies. And shout out to National Choir Star and Globe. They don't send me full copies, but whenever they've got something big and they know that, you know, that I'd be real interested, they send me advanced copies of articles. In Touch has never done anything except for take my money at the newsstand. You give great articles and great pictures. And shout out to Zoe Alexander, a black girl who gossips for In Touch. Art would say black and skin only. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Zoe, I like you. Oh, gosh, you remember way too much. You're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I, we'll talk more about Us Magazine tomorrow. I really got to get to the bottom of the what's a who's in. Can we get to the bottom of it on the other side? What? Can we get to the bottom of it on the other side? No, we'll get to the bottom of it on another date, is what I'm saying. Okay, I got to cool. do a full-blown investigation. Can I just respond to one quick thing? Okay. Dear Mrs. Hunter, I love that. My sister wants my niece to have Dora the Explorer at her birthday party in New Jersey. Do you know how I can book this character? Yeah, you can book where I booked. Go to abracadabraentertainment.com. You know what? Shout out to the hip hop clown. What is your website? Abracadabraentertainment.com. Dora came to my son's third birthday party. We had a full blown explosion of all the characters SpongeBob, Dora, Elmo, Angelica. Who else? The, uh, Clifford. He had the Bouncing Castle. He had the all day cotton candy, all day popcorn. Um. Magic did a magic trick and, and cut a fur coat and that didn't cut. It was magic. Even the adults were mesmerized. He let birds go in our house and called them back before they crapped all over everything. Even I was mesmerized. He stole my father's watch. My father didn't even realize it was gone. He used my father as a specimen. And little, and little Miss Nana over in Nork. Hey, hey Nana, remember that? Uh, little Kev's birthday party? Oh, he was just acting a fool. But everybody loved it. I would definitely use him again for a party. And his Dora the Explorer is, is dead on. It brings the music. It's like one price. You get everything. And you just sit back and you, you collect all the kudos for being a great parent and, and having the foresight to throw you a great party. Really, you don't do anything. You call one number. You know. And I believe it's abracadabraentertainment.com. Magic is the name of the clown. He's fabulous. You don't have to get that whole package. You can just get a Dora. Or something. I just wanted the full blown, um, you know. All right. Look, we have to go into a break. But when we come out, I wanted to talk with you about this woman accused of holding up a hair salon because of a bad hair day. And then in the newspaper today, it breaks down cost of cosmetic surgery. Uh, just a real quick zhuzh. I wanted to revisit Lamont Bentley with you all. I wanted to talk with you about a retired school teacher from the D.C. public schools who says, uh uh. Um, I'll recap uh, about Johnny Carson's microphone. Oh, look, I got enough. A smattering uh, Nick Nolte's son was arrested with the weed. Stories like that are almost boring now. All right, but look, the point is, is what we've got to take a break, and we'll be back. Vaughn comes up at 7 with the quiet storm, but right now you're checking out the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience on the station with today's R&B and Classic Soul, 107.5 WBLS. Hi, everybody. It's the Biz Marquee. You're checking out the bonus hour of Wicked Wendy Williams. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. It's WBLS 107.5. Dear Wendy, can you please ask A. Marie why she had a big hole in her stockings in the One Thing video? Couldn't someone buy her a new pair or she could have gone bare? That's from Nicole. Oh, Nicole, please. That's rock and roll dirty slutty. Everybody knows that that's a, a sexy ploy that the, that the artists, that the stars ladies use. It's hot. 
ripped up pantyhose. I mean, it doesn't make great for great street fashion, but after midnight, if you go into some place like the cafeteria to eat, like four o'clock in the morning, you see plenty of regular girls with the ripped tights. You have you apparently haven't gotten that memo, Nicole. It's okay. No, she was you know, A. Marie. She got a poom poom shorts. There's just one thing, and they're ripped. Her pantyhose. You do know that, don't you? That's a rock and roll hot. Yes, you rip your pantyhose and you keep walking. It makes it look like you've been pushed down over the hood of a car in an alley and taken from the back with no grease. Mm. You say? Hair all mussed up, pantyhose ripped, bee stung lips, no lipstick, just <laughs> bee stung and glossy. Damn. Say? You don't know the sex look, Nicole? Police say a woman unhappy with her haircut held up her salon in Richland, Washington and shot out the windows of her stylist's car. <laughs> Apparently, this person's never heard of a weave because <laughs> hair <laughs> or a wig. Damn. Police said the woman with no criminal history was a dissatisfied customer at the Stage 1 salon. The owner said employees thought she wanted to make another appointment when she walked in, but instead she pulled out a gun and demanded 100 bucks. That's what her hair uh, style cost. As she left, she allegedly fired shots through the rear window of the, of the salon stylist's car and tossed the gun through the shattered glass of the salon. That's gangster. I'll shoot it out and then toss you the heater. Oh. 15 minutes later, police said she walked into another salon and asked for a trim, <laughs> saying she had a bad haircut. Witnesses said she talked calmly about her grandkids before police arrived for the arrest. Oh, my goodness. It was somebody's grandmama. That's a damn shame. All right, plastic surgery real quick. What are they saying? Hair transplant, $3,600. That's low ball. That, that is so low ball, it's ridiculous. Or they're only telling you what the first installation calls, costs because in two months you'll have to spend another 3600 Everything is ballpark. This is coming from uh, one of the New York newspapers. Cosmetic eyelid surgery, $2,600. Sure. I would say $5,000 is the, is the median. Then, you know, it's either lower or higher. Nose job, $4,000. Why do I always hear 7000 Facelift, 5900 Totally don't believe it. You got to be 23 to want a facelift for 5000 something dollars. When you, want, when you need a real lift, like when you get to the 50 mark, no disrespect uh, to the 50-year-old women. But you know, once gravity's really kind of taking its toll a bit more, that's a $10,000 job. I don't know who would uh, crack, crackpot is doing this. Breast augmentation, $3,400. Listen, sister, if somebody quotes you $3,400 for, uh, for a boob job, run, don't walk. Run. Liposuction, 2700 Yeah, liposuction on what? You know what I mean? Liposuction on Lindsay Lohan will be $2,700. You get a big whale like me, that liposuction is going to be like $10,000 because you want about five different sites done. I mean, lipo on the people who really want the lipo. That would be, you know, my big girl brethren, sistren. About Lamont Bentley, one more thing. And if you're just turning on the show, I'm sorry I can't recap everything. But about this time of day, I feel the pressure of Vaughn. And my chicken soup that I made yesterday. Only filtering off half the schmaltz. How you doing? It's Passover. <laughs> the onions, the carrots. Have you ever made chicken soup at home? You use the Murray's chicken. It's delicious. That's what I'm going home to tonight. No noodles. I don't like interference. <laughs> no interference. Just you know, <laughs> fat ass thoughts. I know. <laughs> Well, look, on Thursday, uh, both parties will present their closing arguments at Lamont Bentley's uh, trial. And the jury, this is what I forgot to tell you before. The jury is made up of three African-American women, one African-American male, a, a white female, and a Hispanic male. And they render their verdict on Friday. So by Friday at this time of day, we'll know exactly what happens with Lamont's trial. If you just turned on the show, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't even uh, dwell. Wendy, the last time my husband and I had sex, it, he got into it a little too much. Uh -oh. Wendy, I'm in my early 30s. I've been married for seven years. And from time to time, something strange always happens. Uh -oh. As well it should. 
This time, he started to lick the crack of my behind. Yeah! And he took two fingers, and I don't need to say the rest. I mean, she says it to me, but you know where the fingers go. Of course. Where? Back there. Put that where? Back there. Which, by the way, when Vivica met my mother this weekend at the AKA luncheon uh, in Miami where Vivica spoke, she probably got $10,000. She spoke for like 15 minutes and then she told the crowd um, in her well-appointed white jeans and her down-home style that she Shaq got her tickets for the Heat game and she had to rush off to the Heat game. But you know my pushy family. You know them by virtue of knowing me. Here comes my mother. Excuse me, Vivica! I am Wendy Williams' mother. You recall meeting me at Fashion Week at Wyclef's Wife's Fashion Week. Vivica cut her off. Yes, yes, how are you? They, they, had, they exchanged pleasantries. And Vivica did make mention to my mom that, uh, you know, everybody is telling her that I say, you can put that where back there. Viv hasn't necessarily heard it herself. She also told my mom to tell me that she's going to be uh, on the radio show real soon. It was very, very pleasant. I gave my mom the red light to go up to Vivica. My mom told me like a month and a half, two months ago, that Viv was going to be speaking at the big AKA luncheon. Uh, my mother's going to be celebrating her 50th year next year as an AKA. She proudly um, and pushingly told me that this morning. So my mom and my sister, who's also an AK, they went to the luncheon. Last year, Star Jones spoke, and I told my pushy mom, fall back. Don't go unless you want to get hooked off on, you know what I mean? But this year, she told me it was Vivica Fox, so he's like, oh, yeah, sure, sashay to the front. Uh, you know, she's never been on the radio show to date, this particular radio show, but we certainly know each other. And uh, I think, you know, we're, we're sisters in the name of respect and peer groups in the, in the same age. And, and, and surgery loves surgery. And like that, we are with each other. So she gave my mom a nice reception. Where was I? Why am I talking about this? Let me get back to what I was talking about. The two fingers. Okay, so they went where? Back there. Wendy, I was so shocked I didn't know what to say. I wiggled my... I can't believe you're in your early 30s. You've been married for seven years and you were so shocked you didn't know what to say. <laughs> But let's. But you know what? There's no accounting for what other people do in their bedrooms. But this really sounds like um, 101. Yeah. I mean, this sounds real basic. But let me go on. I wiggled my body so that he could not get the hint that I didn't like it and to please stop. But he continued. I feel that he was just going uh, through the motions. His whole mode changed. Like I wanted to say, bitch. What you have me stop for? I was just getting into it. Okay, so he stopped, but his whole sexual mode changed. Wendy, we haven't had sex since three months ago. Damn. And I can't, see, I can't seem to kiss him. I know that I have to uh, leave my old-fashioned ways where back there. But after nine years of being together and seven years of marriage, so often he wants to do something nasty. I can't seem to get into it. Yes, I know. That there are chicks out there willing to do things and more. My husband is just what they are looking for. Cute with a job, a nice car, and a nice house. He has never cheated. Hold on, though. Just because you do these things doesn't mean your man won't cheat. Let me just say that. You do what you feel comfortable doing. And I hate when people say... And sometimes I'm guilty of saying it, but I don't mean it in my heart of hearts because I know that, you know, when you look at these um, Halle Berry's and you, you can be the most beautiful, you can be the most freaky, you can be the most whatever. Right, man? Bruce Willis said it. And it, That's right. Bruce Willis said it best. You show me a man. You, for every woman, there's a man who's sick of her or something to that effect. He said that in the Playboy magazine like five years ago. And this, I believe, you know what? It was right at the end of his relationship with Demi and it wasn't announced yet. And he said that in Playboy magazine. Woman. Yeah. And you know Demi is freaky. I bet you she enjoys girl on girl and Ooh. all that other kind of stuff. Oh. Plus, she has babies with good snapback and the whole bit. Mm. Look at Jennifer Lopez. Look at Halle Berry. Look at, you know, if a man's going to cheat, he's going to cheat. <laughs> but I would encourage you to open up your repertoire because you might like it, sister. There you go. If not, then, you know, okay. <laughs> Three months, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a lifetime. <laughs> to who? Him or me? <laughs> Did I tell you guys? I didn't tell this crowd right here. Johnny uh, Carson's microphone that sat on his desk. Where is Taryn? Can I keep her Life and Style magazine? Yeah, you can keep it. She, she can. Back, she can. Tomorrow. No, she doesn't oh, come oh, in that's tomorrow. That's Jamie's, right? Uh, I'm sorry, Jamie's. Well, it's a big, thick one. It's the May episode, and it's a bunch of pages.
I don't buy this magazine for some reason. If I can't have it, then maybe after she reads it, she can bring it. There was a fire in Dwayne Reed's across the street today. Ooh. Yeah, there was a whole big mess going on over there. And so I see this chick in some tight jeans walking across the street. She had like a little saunter in her sachet. And she had on jeans and cuffed at the ankle with some black Mrs. Peel boots. Freeze, bad man. Ooh. And I'm staring and I'm looking because, you know, I'm all caught in traffic, but it's a beautiful day. I had the sunroof open and I'm listening to my advanced copy of Wendy Brings the Heat. And so I'm checking out the girl. I'm like, doesn't she look nice? Black girl, her hair bouncing across her shoulder. I said, look at her natural hair. You know, she looked nice. And I look and she turns around. It's Jamie. You don't understand the, pr- the pride that I felt. That was one of my girls. One of my girl Fridays from the show. Just looking every bit of young and pretty New York City girl. 25, 35. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was just so proud. I was like, that's one of my girls. There you go. She caught my attention. That's one of my girls out there dodging ambulances and cop cars mm-hmm. and smoke from Dwayne Reed. <laughs> just hair a bouncing, yeah. whatnot. Smile a glowing Gucci bag. Don't ask me where they get Gucci bags at this age. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. You ready to go home and get a chicken soup? Fifty thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven dollars. The microphone on Johnny Carson's desk. Do you see? I'm taking my memory pills. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, look, we can pick up. Uh... <clears throat> I'm not making any promises. I mean, I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. Well, I mean, not go- where are you going? Yeah. I'll wait. Hold on. I don't mean to leave you so cryptically. Yeah. Not that anything is wrong or going wrong. No, 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 no. This is a good day. <laughs> what I mean is, tomorrow's not promised to any of us, so we must enjoy each day as it lasts. And if by chance something is to happen, just know that I don't want life support for any more than three years. That's all. That's a long time. Well, something might be discovered. She was on for 15 years. Remember that. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? A. B, I would rather cremation. If not cremation, please do my tease and pop. And I, I'm requesting MAC Pearl lipstick for my lip color. There you go. And a private ceremony for my parents and then something public for everybody else. Mm. Yeah. With uh, Bishop Jordan. Really? Yeah. For, for the listeners, you know, right. for the, not, not for home. For, for home, it's, you know. Yeah. But, but for, you know, like that. Reverend Ron, too. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I, yes. Mm-hmm. Very niggerfied. <laughs> All right, you all. What comes on TV tonight? Doesn't really matter. Look, I got to go home. Vaughn is uh, banging at the door like a zombie from the original life, life um, um, what is it, um, of the living dead. <laughs> Remember the zombies? Yes. <laughs> all right. Got to go. Look, I'll talk with you all tomorrow. Hopefully, A. Marie will come in then, too. I love you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next.